she's moved from finding fame in Love Island to tackling really difficult issues in her documentaries. And now Olivia Atwood is sharing her life lessons on a new podcast called So Wrong, It's Right. Don't worry, we'll explain this. <laughs> um, it, it follows her deep dive documentary, Price of Perfection, detailing the lengths that some people go to in achieving what they're, what they're aiming for, which is the perfect face and the perfect body through cosmetic surgery. But, of course, we all know it can go badly wrong. Let's have a quick look. What is the perfect face? Bratz, 100%. The doll? Yes, oh. Bratz the doll. Yeah. What did you do? You look quite like that. Give me a little list rundown of all the procedures you've done up until now. Run me through Forehead it. Forehead reduction, okay. nose job. They shaved down my jaw. Eye lift, lipo in my arms, boobs done, fat from my belly and my back into my hips and my bum, lipo in my thighs. I mean, Kate, wow. cosmetic surgery's been with us for, you know, a century or more. Mm. Um, how much is social media putting the pressure on people to want to change and, in quote, improve themselves? I think there's always been pressures, especially on women in society. We've always been shown different versions of perfect, and social media is just more available. We have it in our hand 24-7. It's, it's, it's the amount we're consuming it. And I think with cosmetic surgery, it's the availability. Mm. You know, it used to be one of those things that was reserved for Hollywood stars or, you know, someone did in secret. Now it's, you can do a payment plan, you can get it on your high street. And as I talk about in the documentary, we don't have regulations in this country on injectables, so anyone can inject. So I think it's a combination of things. Well, so with that availability and mm. that accessibility, of course, as you say, mm. comes the fact that it, it you, you may find yourself doing something you regret and there are people exactly. yes. uh, that have because they've had access to something that looked good mm. but it wasn't delivered in the right way. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we met people on the dock and I've had many sh stories come through my DMs and my emails, you know, since making the show. And some people, just being a bad result is almost you've gotten lucky because it can go way worse than that. Mm. Um, and I think that that's one of the things. I just implore people to do their research if they mm. were going to go down that road. So briefly, I know you don't want to go into too much detail about yourself, but just briefly, what have you had done and why did you have it done? It's not that I don't want to go into detail with it. I just feel like the ITV audience is probably so bored of me talking about it. But um, I, I, I lean into my own experiences on the dock and I talk about the fact I did a breast augmentation when I was very young. Um, and I went too big, I was ill-advised and I had to kind of redo that further down the road. And then I've just done the injectable stuff on the face. And again, you know, some of the injectable things I did maybe earlier on, sort of around Love Island time, were not done by the best people. I, I didn't have the best probably uh, taste, let's okay. put it that way. What was the impetus behind having no a breast And I guess that's no different, salt? is it? That, sorry, that's no different, is it, from when people look back at photos of themselves and think, why did I dye my hair purple? Yeah. Yeah, why did I yeah. do this, that? The difference is, though, it's in a medical intervention and it's going into the body. Mm. Yeah, I mean, for me, I'm lucky. I never had any medical complications. It was more just the aesthetics of things weren't quite right. Yeah. Um, but you know, that implore people to seek out to medical professionals. But just for, before we finish and move on to your podcast, I mean, surgery mm. is surgery is surgery. Of course. Um, what was the impulse to have your breasts salted? What, what made you do it? You know, as a young woman at that time, I was um, unhappy with what I was naturally given. I think that's a lot of thing that women relate to. And I think, especially at that time, the, the fashions and the pressures, I felt like having a fuller chest would make me feel more feminine, which right. it did at the time. I mean, being a woman is a whole thing. We go like this, and it's like, as like this age now, ironically, and I'm doing the documentary about... Um, you know, plastic surgery, I actually think the way I look is the least interesting thing about myself. Whereas when I was younger, it was the most important thing. Right. So I think that comes as well with age and mm -hmm. confidence. Yeah, yeah. I think that you do have a different view on stuff. And as you say, confidence, you know, yeah. there's a point yeah. where the way you look is, is, is crippling if you don't feel right about it inside. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, your podcast, So Wrong, Thank It's you. Right. You're an anti-agony art. <laughs> what does that mean? I mean, it's a little bit tongue-in-cheek. Essentially, um, throughout the series, I'm going to be sharing <coughs> stories with um, my families, friends, experts. So I'm going to be, you know, it's going to be girl chat, boy chat, everything. But my advice will be tongue-in-cheek. I'm not, you know, a professional to give out advice, but I will be having experts on the pod who will be able to give people amazing, actionable nuggets. Because my life's changed a lot over the last seven years, and a lot of that has been very conscious things I've done. So I kind of want people to come in for the laughs and then actually leave probably hopefully each episode with something else. Did you, mm. did you grow up wanting to be famous? Mm, no. 
I wanted to, I didn't know what I wanted to do if I wanted Richard for a long time. I th I've talked about it quite openly and it's something I'll probably go into it in the pod, you know, pre-Love Island. I was mm -hmm. modelling, I was doing odd jobs and I was just drifting. I had no idea what I wanted to do and I just couldn't believe that all these people around me had found things they loved to do and passionate mm. about. And I was like, what is wrong with me that I don't have this thing that I feel good at? Well, now you've found So what fame. drove What's you like to do for? Love Island then? Was it the fame or was it to find love? It was, or was um, it just to find something? It was something. It was, it was, you know, my series, people had, series two people had become known, but not the levels of fame that you saw in later series. And I think I had, you know, had another breakup with a boyfriend. I turned down series two. I watched series two on TV and I thought, I should have done that. And then when series three came back around, I thought, I'm going to do it. But I was really nervous. My mum actually had to really convince me to go for it. Really? Yeah. Mm. She and was like, you need a change. You and need you've to... got her on your podcast, your yeah. mum. And your sister. And my sister. Yeah. And she's very different for me. She's so removed from this world. So her perspective and our conversation is something that I think a lot of my audience would not what have What does she before. do? She works in uh, business development and oh, bi okay. biotech. So well, what, I wanted to, what I wanted to ask you is this. Now you've actually found fame, mm. um, is it what you expected? Because it can be very toxic and suck you in and spit you out. Um, how are you finding it? How are you finding being recognised? Having a I, don't, I don't think of myself as famous because I think of like Mariah Carey's famous. But I mean, I guess in right. certain circles I'm known, but I enjoy the telly side of work and I enjoy mm -hmm. the documentary making, I enjoy being on Loose Women. I'm, I'm learning so much every day and I feel like I found something that I'm okay at. Um, oh, great. And I just love it. So, I, the, you know, there's, oh, there's five sides to any job, isn't there? You guys know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, you're, and you've signed up to Loose Women. Yes, I am an official loose woman. Have you now. actually? I, have, I mean, I see that from time to time. I haven't actually seen that yet. Have, are you on it? Have you been yeah, on it already? I'm yeah, on you're great it, on it. How's, great it going? How's it I'm, going? I'm very much enjoying it. The women have been great, you know, and the seasoned broadcasters, journalists, and I feel like every time I'm on that panel, I get to just soak up so much knowledge, and it's, it's an education for me. And they've been great. And it's just fitting it in amongst all the other stuff, but I do really enjoy it. And are you allowed? You it. Are you allowed to say what you think? Oh, on loose. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I like it. It's opinions. It's a conversation, and it's like great to be able to call that work. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know. Don't tell people. I know. For <laughs> heaven's sake. <laughs> well, <laughs> don't give luck, it good away. Luck the podcast. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank oh you. yeah, we must ask you on, on on leap day. What do you think about women proposing to men oh, today? Yeah. Do you think it's I'm... a stupid, outdated? I think I'm here for it. I'm completely 100% support any woman that wants to propose. I wouldn't do it, because it's another thing for me to organise, and I organise <laughs> everything. So I left that to him. But anyone else that wants to do it, I think more power to cool. them. Uh, I've got some breaking uh, Leap Day news, because we're talking to Laura next, who is our Leap Day expert. Uh, she sent me this. I'm going to do it very quickly, in case people have had enough of it, but I think <laughs> it's fascinating. So, this idea of proposing comes from the 5th century in Ireland. St Bridget went and complained to St Patrick that women weren't allowed to propose. So, St Patrick designated one day every four years where they could. Uh, this then hopped across the Irish Sea to Scotland and England, where we added a twist to it that if a man rejected a woman's proposal on Leap Day, he then had to give her several pairs of fine gloves to hide the fact that she didn't have an engagement <sighs> ring. That's why. And she wasn't rejected. Honestly, what? quite so that that gentleman that got turned got turned down because he did a Haribo ring. Absolutely, um, needs to get himself some gloves. Absolutely, <laughs> or something like that. Fine gloves. Thank you. Fine gloves. <laughs> well, thank you for that, Laura. You, you're the repository She's a mine. of everything. She's a mine. I get <laughs> breaking leap day news from her. <laughs>